What is up guys, Doc Redstone here, and uh, welcome. As you can see, this is not my normal tutorial world, but it is indeed my LP, guys. And uh, after some talk from some of my subscribers, you know, my last video on uh, Thursday, I told you guys I wasn't really going to be doing my LP. And I had more response of people saying you should do an LP than I did when I wasn't doing Redstone. So apparently, guys, you guys like to see my LP. So I decided I'll do one for you guys. So anyway, here it is. <laughs> I've been doing quite a work on this. I've actually been playing this world for about a week, collecting footage. I'm kind of excited because um, YouTube has removed the 15 minute limit cap on my videos, so now I can make an hour LP if I wanted to. However, um, you know, they're probably going to be closer to 20, 25 minutes, half an hour maybe. So anyway, um, this seed, for anybody who wants it, is right here and I will include it on my channel as well and basically I got really lucky with this seed um, I'm in a cave and outside of this cave is as you can already tell a snow biome so that's pretty cool uh, I was really happy to spawn in a snow biome so anyway uh, that's how that ended up working and the spawn was just like right over by that tree in the distance and I ended up spawning over there so I came and I found this and I've been uh, playing it so most of the time I'll probably spend in this cave because of the fact that outside is all snowy and but it's nice because if I ever want snow golems or whatnot I can go ahead and build those so anyway uh, but basically when I walked into this whoops uh, this uh, cave right about here area was a mob spawner and it was a zombie spawner so if you guys would enjoy the footage of me conquering the spawner <laughs> So anyway guys, yeah, I ended up getting really lucky and finding the spawner like five minutes into starting this world, so that was really cool. And like most people have been doing, uh, both both me, pe most people, I mean Etho and Docam, I've turned it into a mob trap. So, ma let's see if I can get up there. Whoops, I'm going to be mauled by zombies. But anyway, um, basically the mo zombies spawn up there. And, whoa, nope. No thank you. Um, I need to fix that as well, but for the most part, the zombies spawn up there, and because of the fact that how the spawners work, if you can get the zombies two blocks below, um, they'll spawn again. So I get them like three blocks, a, a, ugh, three blocks below within three seconds, and uh, then they get pushed seven blocks and they fall, which also gets them away. So I can spawn an infinite amount of zombies in this cage. And they like to escape. But I can spawn an infinite amount of zombies in there. And if I come down here, they actually fall. Did I make that? Okay. Well, anyway, they fall down this way, down into here, where I can come down. And sometimes they don't. But they're basically a one hit, two hit kill with my sword. And as I beat them to death with a sword they give me experience and as you can see right now I'm at level 24 25 so and I think in release candidate too it's about e a bit easier to level so plus I get an unlimited supply of rotten flesh nothing better for the bones than some rotten flesh so anyway as I climb back up here why don't you guys enjoy some footage of how I built that zombie spawner
So yeah, guys, that's how that zombie spawner ended up. It's a pretty basic design. Doc M was the one who I saw it. Etho came up with, or re-brought back the concept, I guess you could say. Um, people have been using these spawners for a while. But uh, I, the first time a famous person, quote-unquote, on YouTube really used it was when Etho did. So, and because of that down in there, I have been able to enchant a pickaxe. And so I have Unbreaking 3, which is really nice, and Fortune 2. So I got really lucky on that pickaxe, really blessed. Uh, I only used 30 levels on it and ended up getting that. So I don't think I'm going to uh, use much over 30 for most of my enchantments. Um, my next enchantment is just going to be an iron shovel just because I don't have any diamond. And uh, I'm hoping that the uh, iron shovel gets... Silk Touch, so I can go harvest some grass, because I really do want some grass. Maybe I can actually harvest the snow itself. Instead of snowballs, I can harvest the uh, top layer of snow. That'd be cool, too. So that's what I'm hoping to do with this. So I need, like, five more levels. And here is my enchantment room. And that sound... See, listen. Doesn't that sound like slimes? Is it just me, or does the door sound like slime? Anyway... Um, as you can see, I have my enchantment room and my ungodly amount of sugar cane that I use to grow it. And basically, to mess with the levels right now, don't lag, I have my uh, setup, and I give credit to this setup from Red Eyes. Um, it's not working 100% because I actually need another piston right here in front of me in order for this to work completely. But, um, so that way I can get the really low level enchantments, I need one right here. But this allows me to get basically 8s, you know, 13s. So pretty low stuff, but at the same time not horribly low. So anyway, um, if you guys would like, here is also the footage of me building this. And like I said, credits go to Red Eyes.
So yeah, guys, that is how that cookie crumbled and uh, how I ended up building that. And uh, this is going to be just a tour of, um, episode. I'm not really building anything. And uh, if I go back in here, you can see my ungodly amount of melons and pumpkins. And back in here, we have the basis of a wheat farm because I got tired of eating melon. Because despite the fact that melon is delicious, it's not good all the time. And also, um, I stole these lava lightings from Etho, but instead of the iron bars, which do look good, I actually used fences. And apparently, the fences don't burn um, like this. So, and it's really nice as long as it's 1.9 and above, because the uh, fence is now attached to blocks, so it looks really, really clean. Um, so I liked that design. So I think I'll be using these lava lights with fences. Plus, um, since I was in an abandoned mine shaft, there are plenty of fences. And uh, here was the miniature one when I first started. But and now, if we go this way. And keep going. I'm not much of a talker. Like, I have to have something to talk about. And I can't think of anything to talk about. But anyway, back in here, we have my obsidian generator. And I don't think it's counted as cheating. I hope not. <laughs> but I ended up trying to collect lava to make my portal to the nether. And that's what we're going to do next episode is the nether. Because I ended up having one of the nether fortresses just a few blocks from my nether spawn. And I want blaze rods for enchantments, but um, every time I tried to collect lava, I kept breaking or falling into the lava. I actually lost one of my diamond picks, which is sad because now I have one diamond pick. But um, this is what I made so I don't keep dying. And then if we come this way, we have my little minecart station. And back in here, I actually haven't explored this cave. I just found this cave yesterday, and I've been playing this world for a week. I don't know how I missed this cave. But I have my little mushroom farm back in here. And did, I didn't really know this, but in RC2, apparently mushrooms generate some light of their own. Because um, as you can see, I'll break this mushroom. See how that block went dark? And uh, these two are kind of light. So I think, I think I have my brightness up too. That might be why. Yeah, my brightness is up. Maybe that's it. Let's see. Done, done. No, see, even in the dark, well, I don't know if you guys can see it because YouTube darkens videos, but apparently mushrooms emit a very tiny amount of light themselves. And uh, I'm playing on bright since I'm in a cave, and by the time YouTube gets a hold of this, it'll probably be shrunk down to probably about 80%, so I'm going to keep it on bright. And here is the mine track that takes me to another part. So as I ride this... Here is some footage of me making the mine track. Alright guys, so after that little minecart ride, we come to this area right here and end up going this way. And once I do, I will end up coming, I hope it's still there, yeah, end up coming to my spider spawner, my cave spider spawner. I ended up finding one while exploring these abandoned mine shafts. And, uh, and here I have a sword with the Bane of Arthropods too, so I use that to take him down. And are they spawning? Yeah, they're spawning. So anyway, they spawn in there. It's a similar setup to my zombie trap. They get pushed down, and they go down here. And just like Etho, um, I have my iron bar here that they will get pushed in here and come up here. And uh, I don't use this much unless I need some spider eyes, just because um, they're such a pain. Um, zombie spawners are a bit better. But I also have something a bit better than even my zombie or spawner. So it's just around this corner right here. And I have my cobblestone pathway. That's actually how I've been getting around, because these mine shafts are crazy. And whoops, not that door. But if we go up here, and here's my other lava light. But back in here, it's going to jump out and get me. Okay, good. I have another spider spawner. And I don't remember that gold being there. But I have this spider spawner right here as well, and I haven't turned it into anything just because it's pointless, um, I think. But if we go this way, 
and I come in here, I have my dual spawner, and that is a skeleton spawner, and that is a zombie spawner. Hence my insane amount of bones and zombie flesh. And this is actually where I've been getting my levels. These things spawn. I don't know if because the two spawners are in close proximity, they actually help each other's spawn rates. Because in basically a matter of two minutes, I can accumulate 100 mobs from these two spawners. And uh, that's how I've been getting my levels. And uh, this thing, just like all the others, is the same basic principle. As you can see, they get flowed down. Flown, flow, they flow down. And uh, we actually go through this door. And we have this right here. And whoa. Whoa. And I need to fix that right there. But I can, you can kind of see them falling as they try to kill me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And as you can see, some of them escape too, just like my other zombie trap. And uh, basically come down in there. And you can see. I actually can't see. But they come down here, and I just go ahead and kill them. And they get, yield me my experience. And as you can see, I mean, this was just that short time I was up there. And I probably got a good 10 mobs right here. So... 10 mobs in a matter of, you know, what, 30 seconds? That's it's not bad. So I really, this is where I do the majority of my training. So anyway, guys, that's basically the tour. Um, Dash Creations. Uh, this is not too crazy yet. I have yet to find too much redstone. I only have about two stacks, unfortunately. Uh, but I will be integrating some of my redstone creations into this world just because... Uh, you know, I want you guys to still get that redstone and uh, redstone feel with my channel. So next time, guys, be prepared to go into the nether, and I'll be suited up and ready to go into the nether. And while there, I'll show you guys some of the horrors that I've encountered along with the fortress I've encountered. So hopefully we can find a blaze spawner and uh, turn that into another spawner just like these and hopefully end up getting some um, blaze rods as well and then I can start enchanting so anyway guys this has been Doc Redstone please rate, comment, subscribe thank you for watching peace out guys